Hey everyone, welcome to the Idiomatic Top 3! With Nicholas, I am the gaming correspondent for uh, Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic and movie critic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about cartoons. We're doing overrated cartoons. Uh, I think we mostly are doing TV shows, TV cartoons, aren't, aren't we? Yes. So let's just get to it. That's not at all a transition, but uh, let's talk about your <laughs> overrated picks. All right, first one. Segways are for pussies. Exactly. First overrated one is Inuyasha. They, I don't like this cartoon, first of all. The good guys are really bland, except for maybe Inuyasha. But the rest of them are really bland and just there to look cool. And they kind of fell at that. And they kind of promise you a story arc saying we have to, you know, get this Shikon Jewel and beat this bad guy Naraku. And they make steps towards that throughout the whole series. And then you reach the end and you go back to square one completely. They lost all the shards of the jewels they had found. Raku is still escaping. He's perfectly fine. So you just spent like two or three seasons of watching that thing. And you see them making progress and progress. And all of a sudden, absolutely nothing. Go back to zero. And that was just horrible. That's a Rumiko Takahashi uh, yeah, anime, isn't it? I think it is. Isn't it that her shtick, though? Nothing moving forward? Like, I'm thinking of Lum and uh, Mermaid <laughs> Forest and Ranma in particular. Like, isn't yes. that what she does? Nothing moves forward. And I'm, this is not, I don't mean that as a criticism. No. I love all the three f series I've mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> but th that's the thing. I don't mind cartoons not moving forward either. I mean, I love Transformers and G.I. Joe, and they didn't move forward at the end of the episode. You were at the same spot at the end of, like, a couple of, you yeah, know... I wouldn't agree about Transformers. No, not Between trans season two and three, things move forward yeah. pretty bad. <laughs> but because of the movie. But that's another thing. But, yeah, you know, it's episodic, and, you know, you don't have to move forward, but they didn't promise me, you know, a, a recap, like, at the beginning of every episode. This is what we're trying to do, and this is what we did, you know, in the last episode to do so. And, you know, moving forward and forward, and she actually sets a good specific goal. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the series, sorry, they completely go backwards and completely go back to square one. And I was like, this is ridiculous. It's kind of like a womp, womp, womp thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, my pick uh, for, uh, for the first uh, overrated series, uh, well, I'm going to go with the big one. I, I think most people are going to agree with me. The Simpsons. Uh, I mean, it yeah. started off in 1989, and I think it was good all the way to 1994, in fairness. Yeah. Look, you look at it today, and pe it's still very popular. People still go, like, The Simpsons is an institution. And I'm like, yeah. it's the same jokes than back in 1989. It's the exact same jokes. The social commentary has not evolved in any way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I got bored. It was the same thing over and over again. I think I, I was a fan of Simpsons for longer than you were. I probably stopped watching it in the 2000s. And at one point, you're like, yeah, I missed a few episodes of The Simpsons, but I don't really care because I think I just missed the same jokes again. And I can still watch an episode or two once in a while and just, you know, as nostalgia to, to see, you know, what that used to laugh at in 1989. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, you're completely right. It is the same jokes over and over. And they, they've started doing that thing like somewhere around the 2000s. Uh, where they acknowledge that it's the same jokes, and so that supposedly makes it okay. It's like we know we're recycling the same jokes. Wink, wink. It's like how how often have you had a gambling problem, March? Again? It's like, and you're supposed to think that's very clever, and then the episodes don't make sense, and then you'll have a monkey showing up, going like, "This episode made no sense." And like that's supposed to be clever. It's like that's that comes off to me as really lazy. You know, and you you identify the problem, and instead of fixing it, you're going wink, wink. It's also kind of insulting to the viewer, I think, a little <laughs> bit, but, you know, that might just be me. And they get things wrong, even in new ones, like where they try to be socially relevant. They, they get things wrong, like they, uh, there's an episode where they go to Canada, and for those who are not in Canada, we Canadians as a nation are so pathetic that when the Simpsons went to Canada, every, it was on every bloody billboard and every advert on Global. It was so pathetic. Wow. Simpsons go to Canada! People are mentioning Canada! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, so pathetic. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> I believe we all had a day off. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Oh, wait, we did, but it was Sunday. Okay. 
the prime minister made a speech. It was quite something. But anyway, from his national igloo, exactly. <laughs> The uh and and they won't go to Canada and they have like all these jokes about how pot is legal in Canada and everything and it's like, but it's not. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're you're doing social satire about a society that doesn't exist. Like, <laughs> I guess I missed that episode. <laughs> and they did the same thing with China, where they 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 went to China and I don't know how the Chinese reacted to it, though I'm pretty sure their reaction was like, eh. <laughs> But I'm like, oh look, they're yellow. But <laughs> <laughs> but again, they were criticizing the the, the Chinese society, and and it, it it did not reflect even the, in the least bit how China works. Again, it's if you're gonna make political and and current event comments, you know, you might want to actually not just grab the headline, but read the article that's below it. You know? Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> uh, well, continuing that line, uh, my second overrated pick is South Park, which again started pretty good. I mean, it was very original and fresh when it came out. I was not really drawn to watching it because again, that animation didn't <laughs> really uh, do it for me. My friends really told me, you need to watch that. It. It's hilarious. And it was really, really funny. And after all this time, even though they only produced like seven episodes per season, um, it is really, you know, always the same thing over and over again. And they overdo the jokes all the time. You can watch it and maybe once in a while you're going to get really funny episodes. But the other times you watch it and you're like, I just wish it happened now. This is, this is bad. I will disagree with you about one thing. I don't think it started off good at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, think the, I, I actually like South Park, the middle seasons, uh, quite a bit. I think okay. it's actually really good in the middle seasons. Mm. And I love the movie. Uh, that was really good. But like the first three seasons, man, it was just a bunch of fart jokes and swearing. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbearable. Yeah. I, I can't stand the three first three seasons. That was new, though. New and <laughs> didn't see that on TV. Especially kids you know, going around doing these things. So it was kind of original and new but yeah it, it did get better but now it's like it's it's again the same old thing over and over again and well i will say it is better than simpsons for me yeah because their their social commentary is actually on point clearly uh, trey parker and matt stone are, are libertarians i think and i think that's pretty obvious yeah, they are that's, I think that's pretty obvious, and, but their their commentary is on point. Uh, it, it, it is relevant. Uh, the the episode about the DP and and uh, uh, Captain Hindsight. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean like that's that's a really good joke. Uh, but you're right; it is one good joke per episode, which they drive to the ground. Unfortunately, they do read the headlines; they just don't really construct a script around it. <laughs> that's true. That that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, that's a that's a good pick. Uh, well, not at all in the same vein. I'm gonna go back to anime. Okay. <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball Z. I have reached level nine. A gigantic fireball the size of the planet. Ha ha. Oh no. By the way, for Americans who didn't understand, don't understand, we're talking about talking about Dragon Ball Z, not Z, because we're Canadians here. We pronounce it Dragon Ball Z. But uh... what are you talking about? <laughs> they know what I'm talking about: Goldorak and Matt Zenger. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you have entire episodes of them waiting for Goku. Goku's not here. Let's wait for Goku so he can kick the bad guy's ass. And it's like three or four episodes of them just waiting for Goku. And where's Goku? Is Goku coming? Oh, Goku's coming. I can feel him. Oh, Goku's here. No, Goku's not here. That was a mistake. And four episodes of that. I mean, it's great now. You have TiVo. You can record it and just fast forward. And it's like, okay, Goku didn't show this episode. No, I'll just watch the next one. But seriously, there's almost nothing happening at least the story moves forward slowly you know very very slowly as you know the seasons go by but it's really boring i agree uh, dennis p uh, who uh long time listeners will recognize a uh, is a huge fan of all that anime stuff and he and he's a very passionate guy as as i'm sure listeners have noticed he walked me through the details of the power levels of dragon ball z Oh, well, yeah. Okay, well, first there's, you know, Saiyan. Then, no, okay. <laughs> and explaining to me how awesome it is that when you reach that level, you can do that where previously you couldn't before. And I'm like, look, I, I, when I watch a TV show, not just a cartoon, but especially a cartoon, I th sort of want things to move fast and want to see a good 
story as you've mentioned i don't really feel like having an encyclopedia of a fictional universe thrown on in my face like that's that is not entertainment to me that is homework for nothing and the animation's crap yes well what animation they're just standing in one position and the animation is just of the energy being leaving and you know the characters barely move and you know you have whole episodes of one guy just holding one position and shooting a, a, an energy ball at the bad guy who's also shooting an energy ball and they just stood there for like one or two episodes and who has the bigger energy ball and that's not animation that's just you know maybe pretty colors but it's, it's not really animation and, and, and I'm sorry I maybe I'm being too conservative but I just don't think it's appropriate for children to watch two guys compare the size of their balls that's no, children have to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Should they do it by themselves? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> uh, well, again, continuing in the anime, Dragon Ball Z was the, like the it thing in the 80s, and now uh, the it thing is Naruto. And that show is horrible. And I don't see what the big draw is okay they're ninjas but i have rarely seen a ninja in an orange jumpsuit uh, for that's ridiculous and they all are you know they all claim they're ninjas they're all dressed ridiculously yeah but what if they're in a transformers arizonian desert like where everything's colored orange for no bloody reason <laughs> i guess so i guess that'd be useful the main character naruto is annoying as i don't want to say the word uh <laughs> i mean in the English translation, he just keeps saying, believe it, all the time. Like, you know, I'm going to do this, believe it. Do you know what the Japanese is? Like, the, the literal translation? Liter the literal translation is, you know, you get what I'm saying. Okay. So that is a little less annoying. I don't know what the Why didn't they translate it know what I mean? I don't know. I guess believe it sounded cooler, you know. I'm going to be the best. Believe it. And well, even you know. <laughs> you know, I, I guess that'd be better. I don't know. It'd be getting annoying after a while, though, you know. You know. <laughs> well, that's pretty much what you sound like on the podcast, but go on. Go ahead. <laughs> and the stories, again, take forever to get places. At one point, they had to put fillers because the anime was, you know, catching up to the manga too fast. So they put filler episodes where they basically, they're basically telling you, nothing that's happening here is relevant for the rest of the story, but watch it anyway because it's pretty. And sure, they're episodic, but you know, there, when you tell me that it has no relevance, I don't really feel like watching it. And they keep using these horrible tricks that I hate, like surprise he's not dead, or surprise he's more powerful than you think, or surprise, you know, surprise now he knows this technique, so he's going to kick your ass. And I, I like context. I like, you know, to, to have things, you know... Foreshadowed. Foreshadowed. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. And it, it, it's very bad. And people are going to say, well, you're watching the English translation. It's horrible. Watch the Japanese. I also watched the Japanese version to see if it was any better. It is not. And I'm also reading the manga. And it is not better than the anime. So I've given up now completely. Uh, I will admit, I, I've never watched Naruto. So I can't really comment. I, I was too busy trying to puzzle what the hell was going on in the uh, standalone complex uh, Ghost in the Shell. So... <laughs> Nothing goes on. She has big boobs. That's all you need to know. <laughs> no, they're talking about like the economy, the financial system reaching a, a point of organic uh, uh, telemetry into the eco virtual techno system thing. I, I don't know. <laughs> she has big boobs. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and, and for those of you wondering, no, I did not willingly sit through a standalone complex. I. I, I worked on the DVD for that, so... <laughs> I, I've watched a lot of crap animes because of my job, so... <laughs> and I mean a lot. <laughs> but not Naruto. Okay. I'm gonna go with a different kind of pick for my final uh, overrated uh, pick. It's, it's not that it's bad, it's that I find people think it's way better than it is. And I'm gonna go with G.I. Joe. Uh, a G.I. Joe is not bad. It's, 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 it's quite watchable. I actually own uh, uh, the entire series uh, on DVD and I watch it more as a fascination because G.I. Joe and Transformers were sort of a, in a very partic uh, particular uh, uh, era for cartoon writing. Uh, and as a writer, this is the sort of thing that fascinates me because they had just figured out that cartoons go through the script way faster than live action, which explains like if you've ever seen the 60s uh, Spider-Man cartoon, like, this explains why 
most of the cartoon involves this. Da 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 da. Like and and Spider Man just like swinging into emptiness for like twenty minutes, and then ten minutes of scripts goes on. Yeah. And they figured out that it's because cartoons move faster, and so a twenty-two page script does not give twenty-two minutes as it would in live action. And but they sort of grossly uh, overestimated the number of pages it would take to go through and went with 44, which, uh, for those of you who don't know, the, the standard is 35 now. So G.I. Joe had those 44-page scripts, and it, 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 is, it's, it is insane. Like, you'll have, like, oh, no, Cobra has attacked. Oh, he, he jumped off. I was like, well, we've learned our lesson. It's like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> it's called action, Dimitri. Action. <laughs> Of course, it's, the stories are, are complete lunacy, too. It's like uh, Roadblocks Barbecue is one of my favorite, I think. I, was it Roadblocks Barbecue? I, I think that's the title of the episode where Cobra decides to create a McDonald-like chain called the uh, Fast yeah. Food Rocket. So yeah, that they Red could Rocket. Attach, Red Rocket, that's it. So they could attach rockets <laughs> and, and shoot them from virus position. It's like, it's completely insane. Which, by the way, Kim Possible ripped off that storyline in uh, Soul of the Drama the movie. Did she rip off or did she make fun of it? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, actually, if it was intentional or not. They didn't openly re- reference it, so I think they were ripping it off. Oh, that's horrible. It's insane, but you watch it, it's not that good. It, it's fascinating, but it's not that I good. I disagree. I think I've watched it, I've watched them all like last year again, and I thought it was still pretty, pretty good cartoon, comparable to what we can see these days. I actually oh, like them a lot. On. Come on, Avatar The Last Bender, oh, G.I. Well, Joe, come okay. on. No, you, okay, it's an average cartoon. It, it's, yeah. pre, it's on the good side. It's, I agree. It's on the good side. It's, it's not Avatar, but it, it's pretty good. The thing I didn't like is like all, all of a sudden inconsistencies. Like in season one, Destro is like this genius scientist, and all of a sudden they need to add a new character to create Serpentor. It's like, what happened to Destro being the genius scientist? All of a sudden you need like Dr. Mindbender to make, you know, Serpentor. What is this? And you just, you know, just an excuse to, you know, like, of course, to sell the toy. Sell the toy, but like, come on. You could have, you know, added him and had him do something else. Destro was a cool character, and you just relegated him to being completely useless now. That made me angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, he still had a couple of good episodes on that season. Though. Yeah, that's true. And the new G.I. Joe's, like the pacifist one. <clears throat> Lifeline, right? Lifeline, yes. Yeah. Who would add a pacifist in G.I. Joe? It's about shooting people. I don't want to hurt people. Well, in, in fairness... <laughs> They never actually shoot people in G.I. Joe. They always seem to miss for some reason. That is true. It's hard to miss with lasers, too, because they go in straight lines. So, come on. <laughs> yeah, but they never really seem to in G.I. Joe. Like, you know when they they have that shot in uh, the, the second miniseries, Revenge of Cobra? Yeah. And they're on the island that's kind of like a... A, a donut. A, a donut, yeah. yeah. And they have the, 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 the good guys shooting the bad guys, and you have, from afar, you see the, the red lines and the blue lines. They're not going straight. They're sort of going like 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 grenades. Like, they're going up and down. <laughs> I remember that, yes. I guess they were weak lasers that just <laughs> bent. <laughs> but, um... No, I, you know, when you say it's on the good side, I agree. It's, I think it's it's a fine cartoon. It's certainly nothing to be ashamed of with well, that it, cartoon. It's not the best cartoon ever, but it, it's a good cartoon. I but agree. it is viewed as okay. the best cartoon ever, and that's why I have it in my overrated pick, where it's like, come on, people, like, take off the nostalgia glasses and, like, look at it for what it is, you yeah. know? That's true. And it certainly was not worth a movie. Oh, you mean the live-action movie? Yeah, it, okay. it, it no. was not worth a revival. It no. was not worth a movie. Honestly, neither was Transformers, but how many movies of those are we... See, Transformers, I see the logic. They're giant robots that beat the crap out of each other and turn into stuff. There's nothing else like it. But G.I. Joe, it's like they're soldiers. Uh, you know, I can watch Top Gun. I can watch Commando. I can watch... I guess. There, there's no reason to bring that franchise Okay, back. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Unless they have them dressed like village people. That would have been awesome. Yes, if they had kept the costume of the G.I. Joes, that would have been great. But no, all the black glass, that's ridiculous. I know. And it's because, yeah, no. Because, you know, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was just repelled. But <laughs> back when G.I. Joe came out, it wasn't. And it would have been just such a great thing to have, like, the elite soldiers in the American Army dressed like the village people. Yes. <laughs> 
Well, they didn't tell. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a good time to transition to the Electric Boogaloo Factory. For those of you who don't know, that's when we take a franchise that doesn't deserve a sequel and then make a sequel of it that's usually crap. <laughs> And, uh, well, since we're not actually talking about movies once again, we're going to do adaptations of uh, some of our overrated picks, sorry. Or you could technically take one of your underrated picks, really, that would fit somehow. Because my underrated picks were horrible, I guess, yes. <laughs> and I made was... a movie of every bloody cartoon out yes, there. Yes, I know, I know. The Simpsons? There's a Simpsons movie. Uh, Dragon Ball Z? There's like six movies or something like that. Yeah. And plus a live-action movie with, uh... Chow Yun Fat. That's sad. And that leaves G.I. Joe, and they've also made a movie. <clears throat> so, you know what? I decided, the hell with it. I'm going to take G.I. Joe. They already made a movie out of it. We're going to make a sequel to Rise of Cobra, which I will call Cobra Already on Top. Okay. I have to say, like, just, just about G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. Yeah. Uh, that movie, you know, it's it's one of the more enjoyable, awful movies I've seen. You yes. know what I mean? Like, it's bad, but it knows it's bad, and it's yeah. trying to be fun. And, you know, as a G.I. Joe fan, you, you, they got what was important. The bad guys have, you know, their characters and their motivation. The good guys, too. And you focus on the bad guys as much as the good guys. The and end, the bad guys end up being way more fun than the good guys. Exactly. You know, probably accidentally, but it was the same thing in the cartoon. The bad guys were just so fun. And in the movie, the bad guys end up being a lot more fun as well. So it's kind of annoying when Jaja wins at the end there. <laughs> and, and I have to say, you know, underrated performance right there, Channing Tatum. Uh, you know, none of the other actors really captured what it's like to be an action figure as much as he did. <laughs> I mean, I could really feel that man's a piece of plastic right there. <laughs> yeah, no, Baroness and... Uh, Storm Shadow were the best. Oh, they were so cool. And I was like, this is a thing. And mild spoiler alert, I was so mad when they turned the Baroness. Yes. I, I, I was I was furious when that happened. Yeah. Oh, God. She's supposed to be evil. She's not brainwashed. I think, no, she's evil. It would have been good if, you know, oh, you've been brainwashed. No, I haven't. I'm doing this for, for, for by choice. But no, she no, actually brainwashed and she didn't want to do it. Yeah, I, I was such in a state of disbelief. I kept expecting until the credits actually roll. And then even then, a couple of like lines had to go up for me to think, oh, no, they're not going to like cut the credits and show that extra scene, are they? <laughs> Where I kept expecting her to just like betray... Uh, Channing Tatum, yeah, and go like this was a triple cross, aha, yes. you know, like that would have been good, yeah, corny under the circumstances, but it would have <laughs> saved the character in this case. <laughs> yeah, but like, here's the thing: there's, there's, there are a couple of things that I feel are good and bad about the original G.I. Joe movie that I would want to, you know, correct. Another thing is that um, I think, yes, I think the movie captured very well the fact that the G.I. Joe sort of are lacking in personality compared to the bad guys. So I would really focus on a G.I. Joe. That has no personality, sort of the same way with the with the movie, but just one guy this time. Because you know, GI Joe sometimes did that, like uh, the opening thing with uh, the Pyramid of Darkness. Yeah, it was really the shipwreck show for a very large part yes. of it. <laughs> and that's good because shipwreck is awesome. <laughs> that's right. So I would do the same thing, except instead of shipwreck, you know, I'm stuck with Ch Channing Tatum or Chan <laughs> I'm stuck with that guy. So you know, he's not going to have much of a personality. He's going to be kind of robotic. Eh, what are you going to do? Yeah. And then one of the other things I really like about the G.I. Joe cartoon, or like that I think is integral to the to capturing the spirit, is that, well, like I mentioned, the, the script thing, it moves really fast. So you'd have yeah. to move really, 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 really fast. Yeah. And I think the only way to capture that with uh, uh, um, in, in a live action movie, obviously the actors can't really talk that fast and look realistic. It's sort of cut down on the dialogue. And just move the camera all the time, everywhere, all the time. Just like zoom, like zoom. It's like they're writing on a paper, and the camera's gonna go left and right, and they're going into a tunnel and having a car chase. Car the Is camera's that... going, <laughs> it's going everywhere, you know. And and the third thing I think uh, a, that is not in the GI Joe movie is a corny moral, you know, like you know, knowing he's half the battle, they always have that PSA at the end of it. Yeah. And I think we should have the hero Chan and Tatting sort of go through a sort of redemption where maybe he can apologize for something bad he did, you know. And 
<laughs> so, to recap, we're going to have uh, a hero that sort of lacks personality, going at it alone, with camera movement, uh, going crazy with the action. Also, he can, like, ask for forgiveness or something really irrelevant. And I just described Born Supremacy, didn't I? Yes, you did. Ah, crap. <laughs> Epic fail on my part. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's that's a good time for us to say goodbye in that case. Yes. Uh, if you guys have uh, have your own overrated picks, please sh- please share them. You can write us at mail at idiomatic dot com or uh, post a comment uh, right below the episode at idiomatic dot com, or you can post a comment on Facebook. We're also on Twitter, and we'll see you next time. Toodles. Mm-hmm.